This problem walkthrough video will demonstrate how to use Microsoft Excel to analyze employee data records. Here's the data for our problem. Langari and Langari's personnel department maintains a file of all employees of the company and each employee's unique employee ID. The file LL Employees provides information on employees for Langari and Langari's database system, including the first name, last name, and employee ID for each employee in the fields first, last, and EMP ID. The first two digits of the employee ID are the day of the month on which the employee was born, the next two digits are the month in which the employee was born, and the next four digits are the year in which the employee was born. The two digits that immediately follow identify the department in which the employee works, and the last four digits represent other information about the employee. For example, from Noah Chavez's employee ID 14-02-1983, Dash zero two dash four six nine eight. We can determine that Noah was born on February fourteenth, nineteen eighty three, and works in Department Two. The data has been collected in a Microsoft Excel file. So download the spreadsheet and complete the following requirements. Requirement A asks us to create a new set of data in the file LL Employees that includes the employee's full name with the first and last names separated by a space, and each of these five new fields with the field names day, month year, department, and other. Write the full information of those employees that were born before 1959 or after 2004. Requirement B asks us to determine the total number among the 200 employees after having removed the two outliers from Part A that belong to Department 1. Let's open up our downloaded Excel file and complete the requirements. Here's all the raw data. Our first objective is to extract the data in the EMP ID column into their constituent components. Start by selecting cells C2 through C203. That's the entire range of data except for the column header row 1. Next, click on the Data tab from the menu bar, and in the Data Tools group, in the ribbon, click Text to Columns. The Convert Text to Column wizard should appear. Step 1 requires us to check the button next to Delimited. This should be the default selection, and click Next. This is necessary because the data in the AMP ID field that is to be put into individual columns is separated by dashes. Step two of the wizard requires us to identify the delimiter. Deselect the box next to tab and check the box next to other and enter a dash in the adjacent box. Then click next. In step three of the wizard, click the first column in the data preview and select general in the column data format. Now this was already the default for me and it might be for you as well. Otherwise you'll need to make sure each column data format is set to general. Once all the column data formats are set to general, click finish and presto, our data is now separated into five columns instead of one. Let's properly label them. Change the AMP ID heading in cells C1 to day, then in cells D1 through G1, add the headings month, year, department, and other. Next, we want to combine the first and last names into one cell. To do that, let's insert a column to the left of day. Select column C and select the home menu from the menu bar. Then in the cells group in the ribbon, click the drop down arrow next to insert and select insert cells. This will add a blank column between last and day. Let's give that column a heading of full name in cell C1. Now for some neat Excel magic. An easy way to combine the first and last name is to just type them into the cell we want the result in. So click on cell C2 and type Noah Chavez exactly like you see it in cells A2 and B2, and press return or enter and go to the next line. Now start typing Ivy, and then look, Excel wants to combine it for you, and offer to do it for all the data in the list. Just press enter or return, and presto, all the names are combined. Now we can delete columns A and B since we don't need them anymore. Select the two columns, right click, and select delete from the menu. Now let's sort our data by year so we can determine if there are any outliers outside of the desired year range. Select all the data or click anywhere in the data and press Ctrl A to select all. Then select the data menu from the menu bar and in the sort and filter group in the ribbon, select sort to bring up the sort dialog. Make sure the checkbox next to my data has headers is checked since row one is our header row. Then click the drop down arrow for the sort by list and select year. Then make sure the sort order is smallest to largest. If not, click the drop down arrow and select that option from the list. Press OK 
and now our data is sorted. Now, since we have such a long list, let's hide some of the cells. I'll select rows 16 through 189, then right click and select hide from the menu. Now we can see all of our data and we want to pick out any employees with birth years before 1959 or after 2004. Here we can see that Henry Paul in row one looks to be born in 1890. That's definitely an outlier. So let's select cells A2 through F2 and shade them green to highlight them. Next, let's go to the bottom of the list and pick out any employees born after 2004. And we see Sarah Castro has a birth year of 2475. That's an outlier too. So let's select cells A203 through F203 and shade those green as well. Now we want to determine how many employees are in each department. And we'll do that using the count if function. I'll scroll down and zoom in a bit and create a workspace. In cell A205, I'll type department and in cell B205, frequency and make them both boldface. There are 10 departments, so I'll list them in order. I'll enter a one and a two in cells A206 and A207, then select them, then click and drag the little green square down until I see the number 10, and that'll be in cell A215. Then I'll enter the word total into cell A216 and write justify it. Next, I'll highlight my answer cells B206 through B216 and shade them blue. To determine how many employees are assigned to department one, or the frequency of department one, which is in column E, click on cell B206 and type the equal sign. Start typing count if to bring up that function, and when you see it, select it from the list or press the tab key. For the range, select cells E3 through E202. Notice I'm being careful to not include the green outliers, then press F4 to lock in the range so we can copy the formula down to other cells without error. Next, type a comma, and for criteria, simply click on department one in cell A206. Then type a closing parenthesis and press enter or return, and I end up with 17 employees assigned to department one. Now let's copy that formula down to the other departments. Click on cell B206 and click and drag the little green square down to department 10 or cell B215. And we end up with 25 employees for department two, 14 for department three, all the way down to 21 in department 10. My last step is to sum the frequency. So click on cell B16 and from the home ribbon in the editing group, click the drop down arrow next to the sum icon and select sum from the list. Excel suggests a sum range of cells B206 through B215, which is exactly what we want. So press enter or return and I end up with 200 employees, which is the correct total. And that's it. We've completed all the requirements to this problem.